last three years have, have seen a, a rise in, in what has been one of the most interesting industries, the data center industry. And uh, this week, we're going to talk to some of the top CEOs of those companies around the world as they enlighten us on the future of where these companies are going, where technology is going, and where they see the future uh, opportunities in this industry over the next five to 10 years. Should be a very, very exciting time here on Digging Into the Future. Got Kerry Gilder with us from the CEO of, of Colt. You're one of the first companies actually to be a power player both in the data center space and the telco space. What do you think? Do you think um, the future is going to be integrated fiber and data center operators or do you think it'll be uh, pure play data center operators and pure play fiber operators? Um, I think there are arguments for both. I wish I had a magic eight ball bill that I uh, that I could say, you know, definitive or not decided yet. But the reality is, you know, I think I think many of this is yet to be determined. I think that the edge is going to play a big part in this as to whether you have that integrated solution either as a telco with, you know, edge data centers or as a data center provider providing uh, communications uh, infrastructure. I What I do see is that there's a requirement for both in the digital economy. And so regardless of whether it's a pure play or it's a hybrid or it's an environment where it's a partnering platform. And I think ultimately that's where we see the future is regardless of, uh, of, of each operator wanting to get into a different, you know, land space, so to say, uh, I think what we're going to have to do is collaborate better. How do you define, you know, a lot of people are, are learning about the difference between a hyperscale data center and an edge data center. And I mean, you're, 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 you've built your, your business on that platform for the most part, um, although you, you do both, I think, right? Um, how would you define it in your, in your views? Yeah, so uh, we, yeah, Bill, we started, we started with the edge and uh, uh, because of our customers' needs, demands, et cetera, moved our way up to the hyperscale. What's interesting is when we started with the edge, it's, it's a location sensitive data center, right? Which yeah. just got to take a step back here and say, so you actually have to bring the data center to where the customers need it or where their customers' customers need it. Very different concept from, boy, hey, here's an easy place to build a data center. Right? Yeah. <laughs> almost, almost always it's not. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then the second thing was, it was interesting, that skill set, though, carried forward to us growing into the hyperscale side of the equation because a lot of those can be very location sensitive as well. So yeah. the same skill set, same core disciplines, again, bringing those core centers where they need to be. But but back to your question, um, it's and it's funny, I think now people are redefining edge data center. And, and I, I think it's an ever evolving thing. Some of the applications are starting to emerge where the edge may go further still, right? Even closer still, whether it's IoT or autonomous or... The, you, you think micro edge, for example, or is that the term you guys? Yeah, the micro edge. Yeah, the micro edge, the far edge. We kind of call it that, right? And, and it it's not like one displaces the other. They actually all grow, yeah. right? Um, over the course of time, so we're we're seeing that. But what we're seeing is in what's con deemed our metro edge, right? I guess that's the vogue term today. Yeah, it was the edge when I did it the first time. Now we're 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 old school. We're the metro edge. Uh, <laughs> but as I look at it, as I look at it today, it's it's interesting. Uh, you talk about the hyperscalers and people think of that that bifurcation, but I see a tremendous amount of cloud coming to the edge, right? Yes. Uh, and I see it in terms of full stacks of public cloud and or hybrid cloud, uh, even some private cloud implementations being in these uh, edge markets, if you will. Yeah. Um, and and these are coming in in the you know couple megawatt size chunks, right? Which <laughs> eight years ago, two megawatt deal, woo! Yeah. <laughs> like, biggest thing People are losing sight. That's big stuff, right? Coming through. The other thing, Bill, we're seeing now in the edge is special purpose clouds, gaming clouds, yeah. uh, AI clouds, uh, vertical stack around you know, automotive or IoT or those types of things. Yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting. This question, it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on. Um, 
And it was, it was an interesting question that came to me from a property analyst uh, that actually out here in Hong Kong, and they said, you know, and they, were, they were analyzing the data center space, and they're like, well, property companies trade at sort of six, six times EBITDA, power companies maybe four or five times EBITDA, and telcos, a good one, maybe seven or eight times. Why do data centers trade at 30 times and, you know, fiber companies trade at eight times? It seems like... You know, the data center is the simple thing and, the, and the, you know, you're, you're putting a man on the moon when you're building fiber. Why, why, why does one trade at such a difference? And what, what, do you think, what do you think the reason is? I think that's mostly tied to the, where they are in the evolution of the business model. Um, you know, these data center operators today that trade at 20 times multiple, they're truly great businesses, as you know, Bill. These things are not just property, real estate, fixed real estate value. And certainly in the retail business part of it, it, it you know better than anybody. It's 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 all the tenants that you get in to connect to each other, and so you know I took I, I learned that lesson at Equinix where the, the location matters. And you know that you and I both know that, but it also the big, the big change is the if you know the journey started with getting the networks in, and then the networks attract people to come in to connect to them, and then you know when cloud unfolded, the cloud became interesting nodes that people wanted to come to connect to. So the data center companies have been very smart about getting the, the network effect to work between clouds and, and networks and enterprises. And they created these marketplaces. And so if you, if you had a draw to draw in companies to come in to use them for network, to use them for cloud, that's what got the acceleration going. And that's why you see those, those operators. Now towers were trading at that, at that high multiple before any of these other sectors were getting pretty, pretty, pretty saturated now. And, and, and I think fiber will follow. So I think fiber, you'll see them. Sometimes it takes a little longer in the public markets to catch up with the private transactions. But it's, I think you'll see the multiples kind of converging to the same place. So Afshin, are we at the beginning of this uh, growth trend? Or, or are we headed towards a, a, a period of, of uh, slower growth? It's early, and early on in the game. Uh, you know, I was just looking at some numbers, Bill, and it said that if you look at the IT industry as a whole, it's about a four, four and a half trillion dollar a year industry. And if you think about the cloud piece of it, it's something close to $180 billion. Uh, so there is so much that can be addressed in the next decade or so. So investors are looking at the growth and saying, wow, you know, this area is going to grow. If you're talking about cloud, the cloud has to be in something, some you know, four corners that the cloud resides in. Those four corners are data centers. And so there's been a lot of still continued interest for data centers. Now, um, I, I, as I said, I, I cannot tell you whether they're valued correctly now, whether they uh, corrected, uh, where they were correctly valued uh, a year ago, two years ago. I can tell you, I still think the growth is going to continue. We are not in you know, the last inning of the growth when it comes to cloud. And that's what I think the investors are betting on, and is that there's a lot more to see here. We've heard from some experienced uh, uh, leaders from the industry, and it's been a very, very exciting uh, discussion we've made, managed to have about what the future looks like, uh, whether you're in uh, hyperscale data centers, edge data centers, or in the early stages of the cloud. Um, this is really just chapter one of what we think will be many, many strong chapters of growth and uh, expansion, as these are going to be some of the most exciting areas uh, as we look at uh, uh, technology growth over the next decade.